Hello Design students, in this tutorial series we're going to be looking at how to create what are called flat character designs. Um, this flat illustration style follows a simple set of rules that produces a design that is both easy to make but also aesthetically pleasing. So here you can see a number of different designs I've made and in this series I'm going to show you uh, a number of the tips and tricks that we use to make a design like this. Then I'm going to make one of these designs from start to finish. And then finally, I'm going to show you some of the techniques I used to make each of these individual designs. Now, the flat illustration style is quite easy to find examples of for inspiration all over the internet. Just put flat and design in any of your search terms and you can find great examples of characters, animals, people, and even landscapes done with this flat style. Just about anything can show up if you search it. So here would be, for example, a flat icon submarine, and you can see the way it fits in with this style. When starting a new one of these, the first tip and trick that I like to do is creating a palette. You can see by these examples, most of my palettes are at about four or five colors, counting the background color. And if you, like me, are not great at picking color, because perhaps you don't see it perfectly, or you don't know what colors go well with each other, there are a number of resources on the internet that can be useful for picking these colors. My two favorites are the website color.adobe.com and colorlovers.com. Keep in mind, on this website, color is spelt the British way, O-U-R. Both of these websites have a number of palettes that you can get to by exploring uh, and by looking into their trends, as well as you can go to create and use some of their tools to create your own color schemes of colors that naturally go well together. In both cases, you can always grab the hex code of a particular color so that you can paste it directly into Gravit Designer. For example, if we look at my Apple character right here, I literally just searched the word Apple on color.adobe.com and found a picture of an Apple that had a nice color scheme I liked. And if we look here, these hex codes are the exact four hex codes that I used in this design. I'm going to go ahead and create a new file. Once again, letter and portrait size. To get started, I'm going to make a square off the canvas. If it doesn't show up when you see that, you should click your page and then turn off the clip content button. This can be useful later for us to hide our palettes. I'm going to hold Alt on my keyboard and copy this four times. Again, this is just for us, so it doesn't have to be perfectly lined up. It's perfectly okay if it's a mess. Back here on my color page, I've found a color scheme that I like. And I'm going to copy these hex codes and use them on each of these individual squares. So here I'm going to click Control V to paste the hex code. I'm going to hit Enter, and now I have the first color. I'm going to pause for a minute so you don't have to watch me copy all my colors over. OK, so here are the colors I'm going to use. And you can see here that uh, I changed the last color, the white, to a tan because I thought it would fit a little better. Obviously, feel free to make your own decisions as your design goes on. Lastly, I'm going to create a new layer and move all of these rectangles onto it so that my palette stays clean and out of the way. Now, there are three different tools or I guess combinations of tools, skills, if you will, that we will use to make these flat designs. Uh, the first is making shading shapes using the Pathfinder tool. So we've used the Pathfinder to make complex shapes by overlapping them and then using either subtract or intersect or union to create new shapes. This can be used with an existing design to create a shadow by copying the shape in place 
and doing a couple of tricks in order. I'm going to go ahead and make this a color that's already in our palette. And what I'm going to do is, let's get this out of there. Okay. I'm going to hit Control C to copy, and then I'm going to hit Control V to paste twice exactly on top of my existing object. If we look in my Layers tab, you can see I have three ellipses. Now I'm going to take, I'm going to make sure I click the topmost one, and I'm going to move it a little bit to the left. This gives me this nice overlap sliver where I want the shadow. I'm going to hold shift and select the second circle beneath it, and then I'm going to use subtract, which gives me this crescent shape as the pathfinder creation. Then I'm going to convert this shape into a path so that it just becomes the crescent shape and I don't have all the other bits that we're making it up. I'm going to select the original circle and do the same thing again. Control C to copy and then Control V to paste twice. Once again, I'm going to move the topmost circle over, but this time I'm moving to the right and I'm going to select the top two circles and again subtract to now get a left side crescent. And again, right click and convert to a path. Now where this gets fancy is I'm going to select the right side crescent and change its overlay pattern to multiply and the left side to screen. All of these objects are the same color and in fact if I move them apart you will see they are the same color. But while overlapped, multiply adds the two colors together so they get darker and while the right screen subtracts the two colors, actually it divides them, so it gets lighter. This allows us to very quickly get realistic uh, highlights and shadows. If I change these using the eyedropper to a different one of our colors, you will see that the highlights and shadows stay. Be aware there is one exception to this, which is that if I make my color a perfect full red, or a perfect full blue, or a perfect full green, you will see that you cannot tell the difference and they don't show up. However, as soon as I move the color to something that isn't the full red, full green, or full blue, the highlights and shadows will appear again. We will be using this trick multiple times to add shadows and highlights to our eventual flat icons. The second tip and trick is pretty quick, and it's just about taking the edges of a shape and turning them into shapes themselves. For example, here I have a rectangle. I can remove the fill and add a border and make that border thicker, like this. I can also curve the edges using the corner tool. But if I want this to be an actual shape, I can right click on it with the whole thing selected and choose vectorize border. We've used convert to path to make objects become path, but here I want the second one vectorize border, which makes our border into an actual shape. To see the difference, it's useful to look at it on outline view, where you can see this is no longer a single object that has the line, but it is now a shape defined by the outside of that line. You can also do this with straight lines from the pen tool. Here I've drawn that shape. I'm going to increase the borders width. I can even go into my border settings and make sure that I have rounded edges. And then I can vectorize the border, again turning this into a shape. And if we look once again at outline view, there you can see it becomes a shape. This is a great way to make details and to make arms and legs and other pieces. The final trick is about taking a shape that you've made already and giving it rounded corners without it being originally a rectangle or a square or a circle. I'm going to use the pen tool here to draw a complicated edge like I've done 
with my coffee cup. I'm only going to draw half of it because I want it to be perfectly, I want the angles to be symmetrical. So I'm copying it using Alt, transforming it with a flip, and then I'm going to overlap them and once again use the Union Pathfinder. It's still treating these as two separate shapes, so I'm going to right click and convert to path. In doing this, I end up with some leftover vertices. You can see here these ones and these ones are extra. They're not needed to have this line. So I'm going to select those extra vertices and press delete on my keyboard to get rid of them. If you don't do this, in the next step they will get in the way. Just to make this shape a little more complicated, I'm going to add one more piece coming out of it, union them, convert to path, and then I'm going to make sure I don't have extra vertices, and this time I think I'm good. Now, as long as I am in subselect mode, I can select these vertices, and I don't even have to select them all, but for this example I'm going to select them all, and the cornered slider comes back. Be careful, if you use the actual slider, it moves way too fast and becomes a mess very, very quickly. So leave the slider at zero, but put your mouse over the zero and slowly drag up. This lets us do much smaller curves, and you can end up with a shape like this, where these have uniform curves that are all following the same amount and the same pattern. It ends up making the things look soft, but also um, intentional and added together. In the next video, we're going to look at how to make the paint can character.